And what we have here tonight is a uh, pretty rare Siemens CHR 532. Um, it's uh, built between 1982 and 1990, according to Fred Osterman's book. Um, very few of these actually out in the collector's market right now. This is the only one I've seen. So, um, but it uh, interesting the thing about this that separates them from the earlier versions, the, the 531s, 530s, is this radio has two power supplies. Um, if you're doing a power conversion, you have to do one of the main power supply, which it powers the whole machine. There is an additional one to run the electronic interface you see here. Um, and so that has to be, that's, that's a little bit of a different wrinkle. So, uh, my documentation is 531 stuff, which doesn't have the front panel, uh, any of the fun functions really there. Most of them are the same. They just are implemented differently. This is done electronically, uh, kind of like some of the Watkins Johnson's when they go to the MFP, MFP version versus the, the analog version. Uh, I think it was about the same, <laughs> same kind of deal here. Um, anyway, so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, it has an audio section here, uh, audio gain, you can, okay, you have a uh, remote section, so you can, you can click remote, it would it basically, can, you can do that. The bite test also goes in that. Here you have various functions, here you have an address, you have an uh, antenna selection, address, and then you have memories, and you have uh, modes. And then you have um, a tuning indicator, which it's a, like an S meter sort of thing, between RF and AF. Or AF, I like to do because it gives you a little bit, it's a little more active and tells you when stuff's coming in there. Um, not exactly sure what this is here. I've seen it on other radios and I just can't think of it. Um, but it, it varies between this and that. You basically have, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway. The, you have your filters here, as you can see. A number of them, the widest being uh, five kilohertz, centered on five kilohertz, which means it's probably it's a 10, 10, um, 10 kilohertz filter. The three is a is a six. Basically, just double it, and then you have lower and upper sideband uh, filters. Um, you have um, your modes here, and you have your BFO. BFO only works in in CW. You can do that. If you go to like voice mode, you know, uh, has digital modes, it has CW voice and upper, you know, sideband, various sidebands. The AGC here has five settings, uh, three of which are manual. And then and so you do that, you can actually tell it where you want it to go. And that's manual, um, uh, fine, medium, uh, wide. And then when you go to medium, you go to uh, narrow or wide for automatic AGC, so they have that. And here you have your tuning, your tuning indicator, obviously, with the LEDs. Um, you also have a direct frequency uh, input here, which you did not have in the uh, 531. It had decadics, it had little buttons underneath here that you'd, you'd, you'd click through to, for under each digit to advance it. Um, then you have, uh, MES. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I can't find any documentation on what that is. But basically what this is, is it allows you to actually, it fools you sometimes because if RMD is pressed, it'll actually hold on to the frequency even if you enter a different one until you deselect that. Um, this is the tuning, uh, main tuning knob, the VFO. We have a lock position there. We have slow. Let's see, it just does it in, in 10, kil 10 hertz filter uh, selection. Then you go, it's faster this way, and then it's wide open this way. So, anyway, how you this, uh, this section here is interesting because this is a fax decoder, um, and you have the, the different selections. This would show you if you were doing this and outputting this to a, a printer, it would show you the, the different things. Um, you have your shift up, you shift upper or, or reverse. I'm trying to remember my old fax days. Uh, then you have your different bulbs here that you can actually, this, those data speeds that come through. And then you have your, uh, um, we used to call it shift, but basically it's it's the hertz, uh, the, the offset that you actually have here. So those are all fax settings specifically. So you'd hit, 
can hit F14 and, and then you can come over here and use that too. Um, I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, so how do you ch ch change ch change frequencies? Let me tune it up a little bit. Okay, so here we go, 5050. Oh, oh. We wanted to slow it up and down, we can do that. I wanted to, so that's WCW, um, WRMI out of Miami. All right, if I wanted to go low, low, I could go, I could frequency. And you can hear non-directional beacon that I get here a lot. Um, that one's out of Tennessee, I think. And uh, I go, so that's a different character. This one's out of McAllen, Texas. So it gets down and does a good job on, on, on the non-directional beacons. Ah, clear it. You have to clear, hit the function key again to get it to work. So I'm here. That's Toronto on AM radio. AM. And if I wanted, this is at a 10, 10 uh, kilohertz filter. It doesn't make a lot of difference, but to take some of the treble off to go to six. Obviously, if you get below that, that's 1.5. So. Four tops, I'll turn to stone. Right here on Radio. And side bands. I'm Lily Frost. But you can hear that. Um, let's see. Let's go to. WWV. I don't know whether 10 is. Yeah, propagation here. Look, it's it's uh, almost midnight here locally. So. It is, it, it is fairly, uh, yeah, you're not going to get propagation on that. Let's go to, uh, okay, find our ham friends and do some SSB. Wow, it's piled up tonight. Something that's a little less populated. You can quiet it a little bit down. We're using manual. But you do lose some fidelity and some of the signals while you do get crossover here from nearby stations. So anyway, you kind of get the idea about how it handles him, um, amateur radio.
You know, some interesting things about this radio, um, it, like I say, it has 100 memories built in, dual antenna selections, the AGC, you've got five, you know, you got a lot of, more than normal for, uh, normally it's three positions, now you get five, so it's kind of neat, and you can actually tune the manuals the, through the RF gain, the RF gain is all, everything's buttons here instead of pots like you normally see these things. Um, as I say, there are things, the documentation here, I do not have any of that. I have the 531, and it basically is the same machine inside as the, you know, except for the front panel, uh, as the 531, I believe. Um, most of the parts and stuff are interchangeable with those and things like that, but, uh, so it's not that bad to maintain. The, uh, the front panel, though, is the is the key differentiator here, and uh, this is the I think this is the last one of the full full featured front panel um, Siemens radios. Uh, this one is a Siemens. This isn't. This doesn't have anything to do with Rosen Schwartz or any of that kind of thing. So this is specifically Siemens. Um, there was a five, a CHR, a C, CHR. 533, but I, as I understand it, that one was just a blank panel in the front. It was completely computer uh, driven remotely. So this is the last one of the uh, Siemens machines with a face on it. So it's uh, kind of special that way too. It's hefty. Um, it, it weighs in at probably about 70 pounds. Um, it, has, it comes in its own little heat dissipating case and yeah, the, it's it's a desktop case. It actually has feet underneath that would raise it up if I were to do that. So it's very convenient. Um, but like I say, that's that's the uh, Siemens CHR532. And uh, if you have any questions or want me to put it through any other paces for you, let me know. Um, give me feedback and see what see what you think. Talk to you next time. Bye.